Warning! Warning! I am an idiot. I'm just a guy in a pole barn. Get it? Pole barn garage. Anything I say to do, you do at your own risk. I'm just some dude. Let that be your disclaimer. Let's get on with the show. Well, morning, evening, afternoon. Today, I think we're going to focus on one thing. I know I've been real scatterbrained these last couple of times, and I got to got to dial in, focus. So, we're going to wire the car. I'm going to go pretty in-depth with it, so maybe it's for you, maybe it's not, but uh, this is a disclaimer. I do things a little, I, I cut corners, okay? I think it's pretty obvious to everybody that I, I cut some corners, and I think a lot of you guys think I'm going to restore this car, and I would love to. However, I got a full-time job. And I'm not rich, <laughs> uh, you know. And I like the obvious answer is to rebody the car, like go get a Le Mans, swap the VINs, you know, data plate VIN, the frame VIN matches, you know, and, and then I have a correct engine too. It would be about as legitimate of a body swap as you could ever pull off, but I don't want to do that. It's just going to stay like this, at least for now. If you, if you come here expecting me to do like a concourse restoration here, well, I don't know if that's going to happen. But, you know, that doesn't mean we can't have fun with it. You know, we're going to make a nice car here. It's just going to be nice in a different way. It's not going to be a pretty car, but this is going to get attention drawn to it like bugs to a, you know, bugs ever. Anyway, I want to get that out of the way. And then on to our wiring. What we will be doing with that is we're going to wire the whole car for about a hundred bucks. Uh, that's including everything. That should tell you right there that it's not necessarily going to be the best, you know, ever. It's, you know, it's not going to be perfect or right, and it's probably a fire hazard, but I do know a little bit of what I'm doing. And if you know what you're doing, you know what you can get away with. So we're going to start at the source and I'm going to show you how I do it for dirt cheap and it will function. So first off, you need battery cables, right? Well, we're going to relocate the battery to the trunk of the car. Now there's some mathematical things you can do to figure uh, how much, what size of wire you need per foot. So every kind of wire, can handle a certain amount of amperage per foot over distance and that's very important the longer the distance the bigger the wire needs to be to maintain the same level of draw so if you're putting something in the trunk of a car typical mid-sized car it, it needs to be about zero or one gauge preferably zero or double zero uh, I've got a way around this a pair of jumper cables I got at the farm at home Dura start and they were open box so i got them a little cheaper they are one gauge and they're actually really good flexible wire in a really good jacketing so i just split them apart just like this and boom there's 20 foot of number one wire right there and then there's 20 foot of another piece of number one wire right here. So you've got, you know, our ground. They're even colored right. I got that for 30 bucks. So $30 gets me a battery relocation kit. <laughs> of course, we'll have to strip them and put lugs on them and stuff, but I'll show you how to do that too. I mean, it don't cost nothing. So this applies to, you know, pretty much anything you're doing. I mean, race cars, drag cars, whatever. You know, if you if you can't put the battery in the tra traditional location, you need some heavier wire. I would, one gauge is about the minimum. This will do for our eight and a half to one, you know, stock 400. This here is a pure grade A chicken lao mein wiring harness. You get these on eBay or whatever, Amazon. It doesn't matter. It's like 37 bucks for this pretty much it comes with some other stuff but 
I think it's a 14 circuit. Anyway, it's like a 10 or a 14. They sell them in all kinds of different varieties. But it has your turn signal flasher built in. It has a relay built into it, which is pretty nice actually. Uh, and you can use that to run your electric fan or whatever like that. I think it's a 30 amp relay. Now on to the downside to these things. For one, right off the bat, you can see this is where it mounts and the wires are doing that. That's not ideal. You would, you know, if this wasn't garbage, you would have these either come back a little further or come out, you know, you'd route everything out the bottom. As it is, we're gonna have to make some like standoffs or something for this. Uh, the second real, real big problem I have with these and why you really shouldn't use them unless it's, you know, something you're just screwing around with like we're doing here and you wanna keep it, you know, as low dollar as possible, which is fine. Uh, you can see in here that these are actually all just crimp connections. There's no solder in this. Uh, so every single one of these fuse terminals is just a crimp connector. And that's not great, and they're all exposed. So you gotta be kinda careful where you mount this. If you're doing something nice, you're not using this. I wouldn't, for sure. Get something from like American uh, Auto Wire or Painless, something like that, not, not one of these. But if you're broke, like I am, this will work. This will make your car function. I've used them before, they work fine. I've known a lot of guys that have used them. They do function just fine. The wire quality with them is actually really nice. It's all copper. You know, there's no tinned crap in there. Watch as I snap this flasher in. See that? See how the spades are actually exposed on this? Look at that. Look how it's moving the entire terminal. You're gonna be able to pull that in and out like what? Four times before that's gonna break through the back of that? It's not good. Not good at all. And the instructions come in some sort of mix of English and Taiwanese, something like that. So, I would suggest avoiding that, unless you're me. So I went ahead and wired up the alternator. However, there is one little thing I want to show you. So this is a GM uh, regular internally regulated alternator. So you can actually turn this into a one wire alternator. So just take a jumper off of your charge wire here, and then you jump it over to the exciter terminal right here. There's two of them. One's for the amp gauge or idiot light, and one of them is the excite, uh, exciter wire. I forget which one is which, but you got a 50-50 shot. You won't hurt anything if you put it on the wrong one. So then you just literally jump to here. It gets its 12 volts here. It excites the alternator. The alternator begins to charge. So for starters back here, obviously we are uh, missing the truck. So we're just gonna have to kind of eyeball it for now until, you know, I can get enough road signs to make a trunk here. So, oh gosh. Get you a battery box. This is a marine battery box. You get these anywhere, Walmart. Oh, drop it on the ground. That's an old one out of my one of my race cars so you know reuse and i made this battery cable this is again a piece of jumper cable this is two gauge uh, put two lugs on the ends of it and i like these this style of battery terminal now to ground it we're just going to run it you know we'll just eyeball where where we need to go we'll probably just put a find a hole or drill a hole the frame down here and we will bolt it direct to the frame and simultaneously we will ground the engine block to the frame up front that way there's a complete return there the biggest thing is, is make sure it's a clean spot you don't want to put this even a ground you don't want to put that laying out in the wet and dirt and stuff like that you know try to tuck it up somewhere where you can keep it out of the elements so i found a hole right there so we'll just clean it up a little bit and that'll work. We can put the cable inside of the frame here, and that'll help protect it some. If you can swing it, use stainless steel hardware. It won't rust or corrode as easily. Here we go. All right, so I made a discovery. These jumper cables actually come with lugs pre-installed. 
So I'm just going to take a piece of heat shrink and seal the connector here. So that's going to be the starter end. Then we'll run all the way back to the trunk with the other end of it. So what we're going to do is run this battery cable up through the inside of the car, through here, and then we'll go through the old speedometer cable hole, and that'll dump us out right by the starter. And the boy made a little grommet out of some Dynamat stuff, so hopefully that won't saw through the battery cable and, you know, kill us. So anyway, now he's going to run it down, and he's just going to run her down along the driver's side of that trans tunnel until we get over to that hole. So we got a little change of plans here. We're going to splice that in the middle and put a Ford-style solenoid in it, because I have one. And we'll just put that under the dash. That's going to make running our crank wire easier and give us a spot we can pull power from real easy. So here's a GM starter. And the solenoid is obviously built into it on the top. And if you want to use a Ford style solenoid, all you got to do is jump from the start terminal, which is the S for start. You just jump from that to the battery cable to the feed and then whenever you trigger the other solenoid it will send 12 volts here and pull this solenoid in and run the starter so just get you a chunk of wire probably number 12 number 14 will work fine i think this is 12. strip your wire back what i really like is these cheapy heat shrink crimp terminals they work really good actually get you a good quality pair of wire crimpers these are channel locked, made in the USA, and they're 10 bucks. There you go. Always give them a tug to make sure they don't come apart. Save you a little trouble later on. Then you just take your heat gun, or lighter, or whatever. We need a little ring connector for that one. You're in business. All you got to do is send power to this big lug here, and she'll crank just like normal. Okay, change of plans. We had to bring the charging cable up here because now we don't have voltages all the time down at the starter let me show you what we got going now we're going to bring this guy and land him here that's going down to the starter and then this guy will get landed there and he's going back to the battery that's what i like to call pro fish we got our charging wire on the battery side and then this guy's going down to the starter We'll land our push button here. We we'll push that button, it'll bring the voltage in over to here, and then choo -choo 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 So when you're mounting your super duper Chinesium wiring harness deal, uh, pick yourself a suitable location. And uh, I figured, you know, where the original one went is probably suitable enough. However, there is something to consider with this one is uh, nothing is out of the elements here. So, even this, I'm hoping it doesn't draw too much splash in here. We're going to have to make some kind of a cover or something for it. Since it has those crimp terminals like I showed you on the back. Like, that's that's bad news with water. It, it's going to corrode and all kinds of problems. Here's what I've got rigged up here. We're going to mount the block and use uh, these random thread things as standoffs to stand it off of the firewall some and uh, use a uh, long bolt here and you know that'll get it pulled off the firewall so we're not smashing the wires on the back so i'm just going to pick a random hole here to drill and pretty much i figure anywhere in uh oh, here will probably work and it's got a little slot on one side so i will install this one click it on there in the slot and hang it on here that'll tell us where we need to drill our other hole Tucked up nice and under there. It'll give us an easy way out for our wires. Well, and we'll have to bring some out this way, but we got plenty of holes to do it. I figure before we go too much further, we need to make us a toggle switch panel. So I have this piece of definitely not road sign. We're just going to put our toggle switches 
in here I got what five of them yeah so we'll try to space them out evenly and that's gonna run pretty much everything I think maybe him like that and then boom 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 do I leave the street sign do I paint it so it's not a street sign? I think we leave the street sign. I have this professional schematic laid out here. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, start. So we're just gonna hog that out. There we go. Those are sort of in a straight line. I guess close enough for anybody who's ever really gonna know. So we're gonna make our panel up. It's obviously gonna be our crank. Ignition, something, 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 something. So these are marine grade. I'm not really sure what that means. Here's your finished product. We got our thunder, our lightning, and our wind. So you have crank, ignition, fan. And I got three extras here. I don't know what to do with them yet, but never know. Always give yourself a little bit extra. I'm sure we'll need at least one of them. One thing I figured I'd show you real quick. This uh, gauge panel I've got here has these lights in it. And I'm guessing they were probably for warning or something. I'm not gonna use that. Uh, but I could use them as like ignition on and fan on or something just so you don't forget you know, have a little indicator so maybe we can do that and I want to make sure this bulb is good and these old school bulbs you can, you can see the filament but these small ones are kind of hard to see get yourself a meter a multimeter and put her on the thing that looks like a horseshoe here it's ohm and we're gonna test for continuity on this bulb. So you're gonna put one of your probes on uh, the power of it, which is here, and then it grounds to where it, you know, screws in and click. So we're just gonna first make sure our multimeter is working. You hear the beep? It's good. Touch that. Filament has continuity. It's a good bulb. So we can use that. I don't know, I figure it's just a little thing I could show you, you know. Sometimes you guys don't know this stuff, you know. And boy, it, it'll save you a lot of headache if you know the, the very basic stuff when it comes to electricity. I guess we can go ahead and make this a uh, little primer on how to do basic electrical work. When you got a DC light bulb, you got to have power and you got to have a ground. So you got to have your ground coming off the side. We're going to use a piece of scrap here and we'll put a spade terminal on it and we're just going to ground right to the studs of these gauges right here. That'll work just fine because we're screwing it to the metal dash so it'll work fine. When I do these female spades on a, you know, like this, I like, and they have this heat shrink on them, I just heat shrink the whole thing down. I figure that makes it a positive seal. Now, it makes it a real pain for the next guy, but, uh, well, the next guy's me, and I hate that guy, so I don't really care. Screw him, you know? All right, here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about when I say that the perfectionist mindset is the greatest enemy to progress known to man. See this here light bulb here? Well, the wire broke pretty far back. Too far back for me to put a butt connector on it. Now... The right thing to do would be to solder it or just, you know, replace this socket. But that would require me to waste time, and frankly, I ain't gonna do that. So, and this is why you should take everything I say with a grain of salt, and I'm just gonna be straight out open and honest with you. I'm gonna cut corners. See this here? I just took that there, and I stripped a little bit more wire off of what I'm gonna turn into a pigtail here, and I just twisted it together, folded it over. It's strong, okay? So here's where you need to take note, is this is wrong. However, there's a right way to do the wrong thing, and this is the right way to do the wrong thing. Seal that sucker up. If I had some heat shrink to fit it, I'd use it. 
If not, use a quality electrical tape. They're not all created equal. This is scotch. It's good stuff. So just use this, wrap that up, and ignore it for the rest of, uh, you know, well, until the light quits working. But it probably won't, honestly. I've seen a million things come in that have that. Twisted wires and wire nuts and you name it. And they function perfectly fine. Don't sweat the details, man. It's two screws to take this out and do it again if you have to. I mean, what do you have to lose? Nothing. Well, now we're in a place where I want to go ahead and, you know, put these in with the wire on them already. So I'm just going to eyeball how far away where my gauge hole is to where the headlight switch goes, right here. And I'm just kind of eyeballed it out to, you know, about that long. Always leave yourself a little extra in case you're wrong or intoxicated. One last thing here before we move on to something else. Since I put these pigtails on, and I'm not a millionaire, so I don't have a hundred bazillion different colors of wires, I'm going to just label them. And that's a good practice to do on just about anything. Even if you know for sure you know where it goes, you probably won't in about, you know, next week. A, literally a piece of masking tape and a Sharpie can make all the difference in the world. Because, you know, I mean, I don't know. I got a full-time job and things to do, you know, I don't, I'm not out here every single way I am, but, you know, I'm not able to be out here all the time. I can't finish this project in one day. So, uh, like this one here is lightning engaged. So, ignition light. Call it ignition on light. And another good thing to do, if you have any experience with drawing out schematics or blueprints or anything like that, if you're wiring your car start to finish, it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and draw out a wiring schematic, like maybe as you go even, even if you don't plan it ahead of time. I'm not gonna do that, but uh, you know, you probably should. This guy is pretty much ready for installation. She's all set, all cleaned up, relatively weatherproof-ish. Swap meat gauges, like 10 bucks. So what we gotta do now is power our fuse box. And we could tell by the label on this, it says power feed, that uh, I'm assuming that means power the fuse box. I didn't look at the schematic because, well, it's barely in English. All right, well, the spaghetti is beginning to form. We've got this guy right here. This is our start terminal. And we're gonna grab power off of this side. The green wires are gonna go to our push button. So power in one side of the push button, power out to this. Crank, 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 crank. So that's about as simple as that. I haven't, I figured out that, I don't, I don't like this, but this power accessory feed, key switch feed, whatever they call it, power feed key switch. I don't like that. Uh, pretty much all the accessories are powered off of this. Well, th uh, this powers the accessories right here to this other 10 gauge wires, the only wire I could assume that they would want to power that. But uh, man, that's a, I mean, in this car it'd probably be all right, but that could be a lot of stuff on one 10 gauge wire. This might make some of you cringe, but whenever I land wires, I like to throw a little bit of electrical tape over them when they're exposed like that. Just in case, you know, you're under the dash with a screwdriver and you're poking around and, you know, zap, nope, there it goes, there goes the wire, there goes your fuse, something. Or it just scares the hell out of you. Just that. That'll help. A little peace of mind. For me, anyway. But, now I want to see if this thing cranks. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, we probably need to throw another shim in that. At least it's easy to get to right now. I'm assuming another shim, not one less. It's not even cranking it. Well, we'll throw that on the list. We'll get that later. Oh, man. It is cold here now. Anyway, so since we've moved the battery into the trunk, obviously we're going to need to ground the engine I mean, normally. You'd have your ground here and it just goes straight to the battery right here. Uh, we don't have that anymore. So we need to ground this engine. Now I have the battery in the trunk grounded to the frame. 
So, you know, logic says we need to ground the engine also to the frame. You could probably get away with grounding it to the body in another car, but probably not this car. So we'll, we'll also throw some body, uh, you know, make a strap to go to the firewall too. Take your pure Chinesium lug here, and we're gonna make sure we have it about our right distance. I always leave a, a little extra slack in my stuff, you know, uh, just in case down the road something moves or whatever. If it's an inch, that inch might, you know, save your bacon, who knows. And slide that guy on. And, you know, they make stuff to crimp these on, big old pliers and whatnot, that I don't have. But I do have giant channel locks. I put it right in the crook of these things and just squeeze. Squeeze from both ends and it'll end up being halfway flat. The beauty of the channel locks is, is when that doesn't work, you just, you know, turn them into hammer mode. And boom. Then we'll put this heat shrink over it so no one will ever know we did that. And then we'll just slide that over there. Tuck it down in the frame here. And uh, that should do the trick. So let's go get a nut and just zip that down and, you know, the engine will be grounded at that point. When I say that I wrench for the low buck guy, I mean it. I had this cable already made up. However, it's red. We don't want that. So, in order to save the money of those terminal ends and this piece of wire, I'm just gonna, you know, as Mick Jagger once said, tape it black. There we go. Literal definition of bloody knuckles. There it is. And yeah, you know, it's pretty clean. So you really don't want people to look at that. So, you know, it's just kind of back in there and hidden. And that's perfect. But that's just gonna help make sure that this is grounded to this, and that that is grounded to that, and that grounds to the battery. That should do it for our chassis grounds. That should be plenty. If we need it, we might throw another one in the trunk from like the quarter panel to the frame as well. Just because this thing is, it's had it, okay? I mean, look, I'll admit it. It's, it, it, it's kind of rough. Well, I've got these belts in the trunk of my 72, and, you know, I keep them in there for spares. So I'm sure I'll remember to replace those. You know, I won't forget that and regret that on the side of the road someday. No way. You know, it saves me the $8 it would cost to buy new ones. Now, look, I know that this is kind of, you know, off topic of what we've been doing, but I've, you know, I, I probably have some kind of undiagnosed ADHD, and I, I just got to do something different, just for a few seconds, just so I got, hey, this is done, and then I go back to what I was doing. So, when you're tightening your belt, I, you know, don't listen to what you're supposed to do, and I just, you know, feed it lots of mustard when I'm tightening them down. Just load that bearing right on the side. It'll be fine. You know, if you, you want to play like a solid D chord on that sucker, whatever a music term is, I don't know. Boy, the power steering fluid in this thing's gonna be a freaking great. Thanks to my engineering. Because that's why I never became an engineer. There we go. And I'd say that one's, well, that's more like a C probably. Well, I think our next step needs to be to go ahead and wire up the old windmill up front. So, in order to do that, I thought we could use the relay in that uh, fuse block, but uh, we can't. It's uh, on all the time. I guess for a fuel pump relay, maybe, but there's no switch wire for it which is what was confusing me about the accessory power for it. Look, just don't buy this ever, you know? I, sorry, d uh, don't, just don't. I have this little relay block here, and, uh, you know, Pick Apart generously donates all these relays to me every time I go. It's crazy. But, uh, you know, this is of some unknown amperage, probably 30, I don't know. Probably could run that number and find out. I don't care. So, you can get this little kit here uh, on eBay. 
And these are actually pretty good. They come with a temp sending unit and stuff like that. Uh, they, they work really well, but uh, they're like 20 bucks. I had this one left over though from a race car. So we're gonna use that. And basically you've got four terminals on it. There's five, but one of them is never used. One of them is never used in this kind of application. So what you've got is they're all numbered on the bottom. And uh, you've got a 30, which is this vertical blade here. That's power in. And then you've got what? Uh, 87, which is power out. And 85 is to ground, I believe. And then you have 86, which is, you know, uh, the toggle switch or what, or temp sender or whatever, which will toggle and bring this relay and send power to the fan. That way the relay is taking the brunt of the electrical load. And that's really what I guess I should be getting at here because you could Google, you know, quickly how to do this. And, you know, anybody could figure it out. The biggest thing is, is when you're running something that draws a lot of current, like an electric fan or uh, like a big fuel pump, of course, uh, or, you know, some audio stuff, uh, you don't, don't just be wiring stuff straight to switches and stuff. You'll, you'll cause problems. Uh, that could be bad. I mean, worst case scenario, you, you know, you, or best case scenario, you blow fuses and stuff like that. And worst case scenario, you burn the car down. So, um, it's always best. It takes a little bit of extra work, but it's generally worth it. Yeah, there we go. See, I mounted it upside down so our wires can come up and just kind of flow in with the rest of everything. This got me to thinking, we need to install a uh, grounding lug so that we can, you know, just kind of land everything on one ground lug. That'd be pretty handy. Well, there's our little ground stud here. Just a bolt, nutted here, and then we can stack our grounds up on here as needed. Yeah, I figured I'll just use this hole here. It's not doing anything. So, you know, is it ideal? No, but it will work. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna go ahead and ground our relay here and then we'll switch the relay. Then we'll get our power for the relay and then we'll send the power to the fan. Now there's our little ground stud here, just a bolt nutted here. And then we can stack our grounds up on here as needed. Yeah, I figured I'll just use this hole here. It's not doing anything. So we're gonna go ahead and ground our relay here. And then we'll switch the relay. And then we'll get our power for the relay and then we'll send the power to the fan. You can get a little cramped working in some of these spots, but it's nice if you don't have all this stuff in your way. And you can apply that to just about anything. If you can take it out with a few screws, just take it out, get it out of your way. Boy, it's cold here. The heat gun is nice. Ah. I am on a beach. I have a corona. My feet are in the ocean. God damn it. Uh, God. I. Well. This is, I wanted to show you one thing I do. Whenever I'm doing toggle switches or anything that has a couple of wires that relate to one another, I just take a little bit of electrical tape and I put them in pairs. It makes your life easier down the road, especially if you're kind of sloppy like I am. And, uh, you know, you're not necessarily doing things the right way. So, uh, you know, just make sure you, you leave yourself enough slack you can keep your routing oh, about right-ish stick this gauge panel up in here here up 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 in here up up in here up up in here you know up in here up. get all this crap out of my way or i lose my mind i am an idiot and that's what i do
Alright, so we're going to wire our tack up next. And I'm going to wire back from the distributor. And on an HEI, you, uh, you know, you put it to the one that, that says tack. Tack. I found this random, like, bottle holder thing. And it works pretty good to fit our swap meat auto meter tack in. These are nice tacks. I have no idea if it works, but it probably does. I committed the cardinal sin of, you know, clamping it to the collar. We got our tack grounded. We got this guy mounted. We got our signal wire hooked up to the distributor to the tack terminal. And uh, I kind of like how that looks. I dig that. And you know, that's really the only gauge you need. Once you know about how fast you're going with these new, you know, uh, GPS things in your phone, you know, the speedometer. Just remember what RPM you're pulling at 65 and you're good. Tack is wired up, so that's good. I have this random headlight switch I found on the eBay, but she's got the most important thing right there. Boom. Made in the USA. And uh, that means it, you know, is about 10% less likely to, you know, catch on fire. Or more likely on occasion. Kind of depends what we're trying to make, all right. So anyhow, we're just gonna put this right back in the headlight switch hole, because it fits, seems to make sense to me. We gotta land our gauge, lights, tack light, and then we gotta put our power into it. Uh, and so I think what we'll end up doing is we're gonna run one pigtail out of the front back to here, that way we can just land everything and bolt her up into the car. All right, so I have got a uh, wire ran off of that headlight. This harness comes with some plugs that are actually fairly decent for what they are. I actually have two brights in here because I'm not gonna have high beams and I just had a couple of brights laying around so I just stuck them in. So we're gonna do something that's, you know, kind of a no-no, but we're just gonna do it anyway. So I'm gonna take these two pieces of uh, wire here. This is coming from the passenger headlight, this is the driver's headlight, and I'm just going to put them together like so-ish. Then we're going to take a big yellow butte connector, cram them both in there, strip off a little extra on this, roll it, fold it, and boom, you've got double the area there. The right way to do this would actually, to me, would be to put up like a bulkhead connector here and then put a plug on this. It's not even how the factory did it, but that's how I would do it. If I cared, and I don't. And you know, this will work just fine. But I pretty much guarantee it. I would bet my life on it. However, you shouldn't bet yours on it because, well, you shouldn't. Just don't listen to anything I say is probably the better course of action. We'll worry about grounding them and stuff later on. I mean, this will get us this half, and then we got to do the tail light still. We got more to go, but this is this is one step down the road, and then, and then that's what it is, guys. It's one step at a time, and you know, don't go biting off the whole enchilada at once. You know, bite off, just nibble, eat your rice a little bit, okay? Have some chips and salsa, then you can dig into the enchilada. But first, you better eat that appetizer. Otherwise, you're gonna be stuffed before you can eat anything else. You know, all you need is one thing. No, uh-uh. Took this wire right here, back from the tail lights, just kind of landed it roughly where those would be. Just kind of snaked it up in here. That way we can just put it in and be done with it. Um, I don't know how much that headlight switch could hold. It's from like the 60s or something, but whatever. And I'm pretty sure it, it said six volt written on the box, but it's just a switch. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, it has this fuse in it, which is probably six volt. And uh, I landed the gauge lights here just because I didn't want to split terminals too much. So we will bring in our power right here. And then we'll bring in our gauge is here, then we'll bring in the, uh, you know, front and rear lights right here. And we can just split off of that pigtail up there for all the marker lights and stuff, if I even do that. I mean, is it is it really necessary? I wanted to show you something that is indicative of the quality 
of this wiring harness. You see how it might be hard for you to read, but that says Heed Light Sayich. H E E D Light S A I T C A. That's uh, yeah, good stuff. All right, we're all hooked up here. This should work, I guess. But again, look at all these open terminals here. I do not like, I do not like at all. I'm gonna just wrap that up in electrical tape. So ignition on. We can turn on our headlights. We got our dash lights here. You know, dash lights. And you see that light comes on when the, remind you the fan's on. Which we still gotta finish wiring that. Uh, I wish I had an excuse, but I forgot. All right, so what we're doing here is I forgot which uh, which one of these wires is the high speed on these fans. It's got a low and a high speed. And yeah, normally you'd have like a you know a Windows 95 control on that thing or something. But ah, God, it's full of stuff. All right, that's kind of that's kind of blowing. Let's see, maybe it's the blue one. Oh no, it's definitely black with the orange stripe. Now we're cooking with wind. Another thing to be careful of, if you got one of them aftermarket wind makers, uh, you know, make sure you wire them the right way. If you flip the polarities on a DC motor, it'll run backwards. So you could be blowing that way, which would be the wrong way. But with a factory fan like this, they, uh, they're usually color coded pretty well. So we're gonna use a pretty heavy wire here. I think this is number eight. Uh, we're gonna use eight because we got a little bit of a run to go. I don't wanna just shoot right over the top of the engine. I kinda wanna hide it over on the other side. We can run it that way. We can tuck it up in our headlight harness, you know. But uh, I use a number eight, way too big. I mean, it has number 10 on it. You can probably get away with 12. But I don't, that is going to be by far the highest amp drawing device in this whole car. We use this heavy wire just to give us that little extra peace of mind. You know, you might notice that I cut some corners, but I also, I follow that corner. In fact, I follow it real tight on certain things. And that's how, for to me, you got to operate, you know what I mean? You can half-ass some stuff, but when it comes to the important things, you know, make sure you get it right, you know? <laughs> You know, death is bad. Here's our wire coming from the fan. That's the load side of the relay. And you put the load side of the relay to the 87 terminal. And then we're gonna take the number 30 side of the terminal and just shoot that straight to battery. Because I want these to work all the time. Uh, I want to be able to, you know, even whenever everything's off, I want to be able to run them and cool it off, you know, not saying we might go into any burnout competitions, but we're going to go into some burnout competitions. <laughs> Alright, there's your finished result. It's reasonably clean. Look how many terminals are landed on that solenoid. That is not good. There's better ways to go about that, like a terminal block or something like that, but it will work. And this is kind of what I'm getting at here, guys. This is low buck, low effort. You can get this done in a few hours between lunch and dinner, and it will work fine. It'll work reasonably well. This is just for you guys that are, you know, you're stagnated. Just get out there and do it, man. This works fine. Let's check it out. I ain't even tried it yet. There we go. We got our indicator light. We got wind. Lots of it. And with that relay and stuff, it'll be fine. I mean, that, that's actually pretty good. All for about, you know, I don't know, 20 bucks? Yeah, well, 30, I guess. Let's figure in the wire. About 30 bucks. And you can, you know, that's that's a major component of something. You got overheating problems or something? Go to your pick-apart. Go get you a 
mid 90s Taurus or Cougar. Pop that sucker out. It's pretty much universal for muscle car era cars. And just zip tie the damn thing in there, see if it helps. We're gonna probably work on attaching that a little bit better next because it is just zip tied in there but it did hold up in a circle track car but it looks terrible so we'll we'll do something better there but in the meantime we got a functional fan now and we've got our functional switch panel and half of the lights we need progress progress if i wanted to be perfect i'd still be well saving my money trying to buy an 800 dollars wiring harness kit that's what i'd be doing if you hear gunshots in the background, just ignore them. It's New Year's Day and, you know, out here it's like World War III every year. Make sure nothing falls through the roof. We're gonna go ahead and wire up our ignition. And not much to tell you here, except for I just chose a random accessory wire here. It looked like a heavier wire. You know, only important thing I would say is, you know, write down somewhere what circuit that is in case the car goes silent on you. And, uh, you know, you, you need to know where that fuse is. Anyway, we'll just, uh, you know, run it right here. It goes right to battery right here, 12 volts to the coil, and that's all you need on the GMHEI. Leave you enough slack here so you can, you know, time it, adjust it. Well, I think we'll just stop right here in the middle, and we'll do the rest of the wiring in another episode. So thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe, share, uh, you know, tell your friends about this thing, what we're doing here. Really appreciate you guys being here. Channel's doing really good. We're growing steadily for sure. Uh, you know, again, thanks for being here and watching. And take everything I do with a grain of salt. You know, I understand. I'm sure, a lot of you guys have higher standards than I do, and. Sure, a lot of you guys have lower standards than I do, and we'll just meet somewhere in the middle. And I'm just really doing this because I, I want, you know, especially younger guys, it doesn't have to be perfect, man. Just slap that sucker together and hit the road, you know. Go have some fun with your buddies. That's what it's all about, is having fun, you know. If you don't enjoy what you're doing with something, why are you doing it? Y'all, take it easy. Again, subscribe bell, comment, whatever. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Pole Barn Garage.